part of the hospital-wide initiative and the eight nursing competencies were to focus the nursing staff on establishing a plan to take the guesswork out of patient handling needs in order to keep them safe and keep the nursing and nursing support staff safe. Starting in uh, the spring of 2011, I had been observing for clinical microsystems improvement. And one of the areas that I had identified through my just general observation was the fact that we had these great pieces of equipment, such as the ceiling lifts, and we didn't appear to be using them regularly with our patients. The more I looked into that, the more I found that we, in fact, weren't using them as much as we should be. And I also found through additional research that we were having on average six to eight patient handling associated musculoskeletal disorder uh, injuries per year in our unit. Hi, Mammy. We're going to reposition you real quick. Make sure you don't get any pressure sores, okay? Well, the injuries and the injury rates may not seem high to some. All of the musculoskeletal disorder and patient handling associated injuries we have here at Dartmouth are 100% preventable. There are a variety of impacts, mostly negative when we have an injury in the ICU. Uh, it adversely impacts the quality of care. Uh, because that patient assignment may have to change to another nurse that's not as familiar with that patient. We have to conduct additional training of the staff members. There are financial impacts that occur. You've got direct costs from the injuries and you have indirect costs such as retraining, lost time from work, changes to malpractice insurance rates, uh, workers' compensation insurance rates, and those indirect costs on average are three to five times the direct cost. That adversely impacts us as an institution from a quality of care and a quality of life perspective, it affects nursing because the, the, the injured nurse may have to modify their duties, they may lose time from work, and those injuries are not limited to here at Dartmouth. They also affect their life at home. One out of 10 nurses nationally leave the profession every year as a result of musculoskeletal disorders. So we have uh, an attrition rate as well. Review of the literature, on this topic nationally also indicated that this was a, a major systems level problem not only in our microsystem here at Dartmouth and the microsystem of the ICU but nationally. After identifying that we had significant musculoskeletal disorder injury rate here in the ICU I decided to conduct a quality improvement project that focused on a systems level problem that utilized the Dartmouth clinical microsystems quality improvement ramp to focus on the utilization of equipment to try and transition us to more evidence-based practice when it came to patient handling. What we found during the anonymous surveys that were submitted that nurses generally are aware that they need to take good care of themselves, they need to take good care of their patients, and they should be utilizing the, the uh, correct equipment. However, the nursing staff were not taking that initiative for a variety of reasons and a variety of other so factors. At that point, I met with the unit leadership and discussed my plan to implement a quality improvement project. Uh, the unit leadership was receptive to this, having also identified this as a problem through their casual observation. We decided there was clearly a need identified and we began discussing that uh, need with unit leadership as far as establishing some required nursing uh, education and a much broader focus on requiring nursing competencies regarding safe patient handling that would be rolled out in the coming months. The small quality improvement project that I conducted uh, did increase nursing knowledge. We've revised our patient handling policy. One of the major changes to that policy was a reduction in the amount of force that healthcare workers apply in patient repositioning to 35 pounds from 50 pounds based on uh, the recommendation from NIOSH, which is a division of CDC. The safe patient handling policy was also updated for the most recent literature, so it's evidence-based practice on the cutting edge of what we're seeing elsewhere in the nation and that have resulted in reduced musculoskeletal injuries. However, until we are able to get down to an injury rate of zero, we still have work to do. To be successful in such a broad scale rollout is that the program be multifaceted. So it not just focus on one individual component, but it focus on the whole nursing practice. And one of those key components is having peer leaders or super users, as we call them here at Dartmouth, that have additional training 
above and beyond the training required for our normal bedside staff. And they're put in an ideal position set up for success to train the bedside staff and troubleshoot issues that occur during bedside nursing. I recently became certified as a CNL or clinical nurse leader, which is a position that focuses on outcomes and uh, systems level improvement. And since getting on board with the hospital-wide initiative for safe patient handling, hey, Amy, I have we'll found that while we haven't measured a change because we're in the middle of the rollout of that initiative, that I found that nurses have actually sought me out uh, knowing that I'm knowledgeable in that area and I'm also a certified super user in that area uh, for advice on repositioning their patients. If you've never conducted such a project a before, a little... there are numerous people here at Dartmouth that are very familiar with the process and the ins and outs of the institution that are willing to help. There are any number of areas that uh, nursing staff can play an active role in improving Dartmouth as an institution, as a workplace, and as a high quality care facility, and also to help reduce the uh, cost of delivery of healthcare.